think we're live. I know. <laughs> we, we are live. Well, hello, my friends. It's me, hello. Stu, hello. with my uh, lovely wife, Amy. Hello. How are you doing tonight, babies? I'm good. It's a long weekend in Canada. It's a long weekend in Canada. Happy long weekend to all of our Canucks. Yeah, it looks a lot different this long weekend than it, other long weekends. <laughs> yes, definitely. But... You and I, yeah. we were discussing uh, something uh, and we decided, you know what, why don't we just jump on live and just share it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are going to share with you our three steps to less chaos and more progress. Yeah. Why don't you talk about how this kind of came up today? It actually came up, it was funny, it came up on a drive today. We were going for a drive down the this is our This is our weekly our weekend. quarantined <laughs> highlight. Yes. Pretty exciting. <laughs> we, we we leave the house, uh -huh. we we get in the car, and we go for a drive. A drive. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't exactly. get any more exciting than that, I don't know what else. No, it was interesting because we were driving to where we used to live before we moved more into the city where we are now. And we passed some houses that we had put an off or not put an offer, but we had looked at years ago. Like, like our like, first house, like when we were looking yeah. to buy our first so this house. Is like, 12, 14 years oh, for a long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we passed it. And, and our daughter said, but mom, why didn't you guys buy that one? And yeah, we passed this house. It was like a, one of the ones we looked at. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it was blue. Yeah, I don't, yeah. It's funny because now maybe you guys get like this. You look at houses you looked at 12 years ago. And I'm, I'm like, why did we look at, like, <laughs> I, it just, it didn't, I don't know. It doesn't have much. It doesn't curve. meet your it taste now. It wasn't curb appeal. No, no, no. no. But anyway, it was an Sorry. interesting story. Yeah. So uh, you, we passed it, yeah. and then we said to our kids, "We're like that was a house that we were thinking of buying," mm -hmm. and and our daughter Marla said, "Well, why didn't you?" And go ahead. <laughs> what, well, well, we didn't buy that house because it needed a lot of fixing up. And to be completely honest, a lot of people that know us, Stu is not. He's not very handy. He didn't get his dad skills. I'm not handy and it was going to be a lot of work to fix it up. So that's why. We yeah. We explained that to Marla. We said like, look, um, that house was going to need a lot of, a lot of help and uh, it was going to need a lot of fixing up. Yeah. And so uh, that's one of the main reasons we didn't buy it. And Marla said, well, why didn't you just fix it up? Which is a good question. It's a good question, yeah. right? Maybe. You know? And so this is kind of what mm -hmm. uh, started this conversation for us because um, we've known for a long time that uh, I'm not I'm not going to be able to fix up a home. Like, Never, no, and that's okay. Uh, yeah, my my dad is like the ultimate fixer upper. Like mm -hmm. anything can break, and my dad will be able to figure out how to how to fix it. That's just kind of how he's wired. Me, I'm the complete opposite of that. Yeah, but that that's okay. It was a good, interesting conversation, Mark. We said you know we couldn't fix it up, and that wasn't our thing, and. That's just not dad's thing and it's not mom's thing. And that's okay. That's why we didn't get that. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and so we went on to explain to Marla that like um, there are like 99% of the things in this world uh, I am very terrible at. But the 1% that I am really, really good at allows me to pay for the 99% of the things that I am not good at. And that's kind of what we wanted to come to you tonight to talk about which is like the three steps to less chaos and more yeah, progress. Like staying in that lane of what you're good at. Okay, so number one yeah. is getting clear on what you are good at. Yeah. So okay. let's talk about this. So like for you, it's obviously, and for me too, it's not fixing up. I'm very good at organizing things. I love organizing things. So that's like my, my thing. That's your strength. And the details. In our relationship, we've been married a long time, we've been together a long time. We own multiple businesses and houses, and I'm I'm the one behind the scenes. Totally <laughs> moving the boat or moving the ship. <laughs> Lin Lindsay says, "I love that you're drinking wine, Amy." Oh yes, cheers. yeah. This is this oh, this is another story of our life. Ooh. Yeah, uh, wine and water. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. What were we? we were just saying that we got really clear. And you're very, very good at the yeah, details, and, you're good at and that's the that's part of the you know in in our relationship, yeah. and in our business, and in the charity, you do the organizing and you handle the details. All the behind the scenes. All the behind the scenes. Nothing would happen without this woman's masterminding behind the scenes. <laughs> Me, yeah. on the other hand, yeah, completely useless when it comes to all things details. 
And and this was actually a hard thing for you for a while because you used to get really frustrated with me. Well, because now I'm used to it. We've been together a long time. And now, like, when I leave the kids, you're an amazing dad, like the best dad anyone could ever ask for. But, like, when I go away for a weekend, like, I have to leave some notes because there's sometimes, like, (laughs) the birthday parties. Like, who's the birthday party? The address for the birthday party, the gift, or the gymnastics details, or the horseback riding details. Even though, because even though you come to those things, you just don't. You don't yeah. You want to know, uh, can I just share a quick lesson on this? Yeah. So I have a really good friend of mine. His name is Joe. Oh. And uh, I went to, I, I grew up with Joe in high school. I went to university with Joe. We were roommates together. Mm-hmm. Joe was one of those kids, uh, not kid anymore, but like was then, uh, who was just top of the class. We're talking like A plus average, right? Scholarships, always top of the class. And uh, we were in the business program, and I'll never forget this. This was like third year at Laurier at Wilfrid Laurier University, and we're on our way to. Uh, Paige says uh, yes on the hashtags. No, no hashtags. Okay, if you've listened <laughs> to the last episode of the Marketing Your Business <laughs> podcast, you know I am banned from using hashtags. It's a nice try, Paige. Okay, um, but so Joe was one of those ridiculously smart kids. So we're in the same business program. We're going to uh, class. And we're running, uh, Joe was running a bit late and we, you know, we're all roommates. We're all in the same program. So we'd all usually go together. And Joe's just like, okay, you, you go, you go and I'll catch up with you guys later. Um, so we're like, okay, so we go to class and then like class was supposed to start at 9am and it's like five to nine, no Joe, nine o'clock, no Joe, 10 after nine, no Joe, quarter after nine, no Joe. And then about 20 minutes after nine o'clock, we see him like coming up and he's like looking in like the, cl- the, the classroom like door window. I wonder if he remembers this. I don't, I, he probably doesn't remember. I remember it. He's looking in the class door window and he's like, oh, okay. He sees that that's the class and he comes in and he sits down. And uh, afterwards, I'm like, dude, where were you? And he's like, I couldn't find the classroom. And, okay. and we're, like, we're like, well, what do you mean you couldn't find the classroom? He's like, well, I, I didn't know where it was. We're like, dude, we've been coming to the same class. Almost four years. Is yeah, for like, you know, all semester long. What do you mean you didn't know where it was? And he's like, well, I, I just I just always followed you guys. And we're like, what? And, and then long story short, Joe went on to explain uh, to us that, you know, part of the reason that he is able to do like so phenomenally well in school. And by the way, he's also now like, one of the high, like highest up in fidelity, manages billions of dollars in, uh, you know, um, investing. So like he, he's doing well for himself. But one of the things that he said was just like his brain just doesn't have the ability to be able to, you know, take on all things. So he, and he but he's very mindful of what his brain is very taking mindful. He he, and very early on, he was very mindful of that. And I'll never forget that lesson. And so in a similar vein, like this is all about getting clear on what you're what you're good at and what you're not good at. And and uh, and so for you is organizing details. For me, you know, it's like coming up with you know ideas. Yeah, and running your business. Running a bit like communicating, right? Um, and copy, uh, copy. you know, creating yeah. copy. Yeah, all, like marketing related stuff, and just staying in that lane. Um, so that's step number one: was yeah, getting, clear getting clear on what you're good at and owning it, and really? owning it, and yeah. being being good with it, and not apologizing if you don't know something that you just don't know. And it's okay not to know. It yeah. To know like it's a, like, I'm perfectly fine with the fact that I am absolutely useless when it comes to fixing stuff Yes, that's okay. <laughs> and cooking. Yeah. And cooking. Yeah. Anyway. Let's, so, uh, okay. <laughs> step number two. But this is where it comes in is like, we notice early on in our life that we're um, in like, for an example, we've started to build a little team around us of people that are really good in things. That okay, so time out. So step one is get clear on what you're good at. Step mm-hmm. two is build a team. Yeah, build a team. And it doesn't cost anything. It's finding those people that are really good at certain things that you need in your life and your business. So, for example, when we first started out together and your first business, we found um, a really good accountant and a financial planner. And the financial planner has now worked with us for many, many years and an accountant. And since the, what, the last like five years, we've joined them together. We, and now we go out for dinner with them every, like every six months we're either on a zoom or we meet in person and we discuss our goals, where we want to go. And then it's great. Cause our financial planner is like planning stuff. And then our accountant knows the numbers. And I would say pretty much all of our life. Yeah. Like she knows everything down to like the help that we have, how much we spend on things. Like she's, she's handled our life in that way for like 10 years now. Yeah. More than that. 
So mm-hmm. since, uh, well, we, we've been working with Brenda since 2004. Yeah, but you know, so, the, cra- but the crazy thing is, this is where the details come in. Like, Stu, I'm the one that'll meet with them more frequently, and then they'll I, they'll give me a general overview, and I'll share the general overview with you. Yeah. But I don't share with him all the other details that goes through my brain and what I talk to them about. No. And I like sift down to just a few little key things. Yeah. Which is all you need to know. You don't need to know everything else, right? So. Yeah. It's finding, and those people don't cost you. It doesn't cost anything to no, find to the find people. them. Yeah. But then when you start working with them. They're, they're really key people that you need on your team. But, and to give you some context, like we've gotten real clear on this right from the get go. So, you know, you talked about our accountant, our financial advisor. Uh, Mm -hmm. I would also say like our property manager, you know, so so. rental properties and right from like day one, when we bought our first house, we like saved and saved and saved and saved and like put money aside, bought really cheap furniture, (laughs) like did what we can to pay off the mortgage paid it off as quick as we could. And then we invested that money into other real estate properties. So we have rental properties, which again is something that I run with our property manager, but our property manager handles 99% of it. He is worth every penny that we pay him for the rent. Like the I, I, I just want to point out, uh, mm-hmm. Mary said that she's like me and doesn't like the details. So I'm not alone. I'm not oh, alone. Yeah. There's so many people. Like Mary, that. thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's now become part of our team um, yes. um, and helps with, you know, because he's got way more experience in tenants. And, and when we started off, I was the one interviewing people to live in the house and going through all the tenant stuff. And I hated it. And then we found him and it was like, perfect. He can handle it. And, and I'm not going to use all my time and energy to try and find out like how to do this the best way possible, because that's not where my energy is best spent for me and for us as a couple and for my family to be stressed out on that. Totally. So he's become into like, he's part of our little. And we do this with all areas of our life. Like Mm -hmm. as much as possible, we try to surround ourselves with a team of people who can help us in, you know, to be able to move forward faster. Yeah. And it saves us like, uh, it it saves us a ton of stress Mm -hmm. because we're not bogged down into figuring stuff out that, you know, is not our, you know, sweet spot. No. And then like, yes, it costs money, but at the same time it doesn't as you build. So for like the property manager, he doesn't get paid unless rent comes in and he's the one going out to find tenants. And then, so it's, I guess it's money off like our final number, but he doesn't get that money until the tenants pay as well. And even with our um, accountant, like, when you think of all the time that she spent on all of our stuff, well, I just th- it's for me, it's like months. she saves us so much money on on taxes, like just that mm-hmm. alone. So yeah. it's like you know, uh, is it worth it? Uh, well, one hundred percent because we're not having to deal with it, um, and it's saving us much more than what it's costing us. Yeah. Um, okay, or so lawyer, or just even a lawyer, having a lawyer or someone that you connect with. We've started to connect with one firm in Burlington here in Ontario, and they've been amazing. Yeah, and it's not even like that we use them frequently, but having them and connecting with them and knowing that they're there to talk to, um, has been a huge help. Has been. Um, that way. And so we do this in all areas of our uh, mm. life. I even think about the charity. You know, mm. you think about like the fact that we have this tiny small team mm-hmm. uh, that is essentially like responsible for implementing, you know, millions of dollars worth of, you know, philanthropic projects every year. And, uh, that is spearheaded by, you know, one of our, um, uh, one of the organizations that we partnered with in Kenya, yeah. you know, with, uh, Irene, you know, and so like, she's a huge part of our team. We wouldn't be able to do any of what we do without her. No, She's like our local Kenyan based organization we work with, but then we have a team that works with her team. But again, it's like, she's, she's the one, like the twine that keeps us like together to get things. And so I think here is the key for the second step is it's less about thinking about like what you need to do and more thinking about who you need to touch base with, who, who can do that, you know? So you can stay in your lane and what you're good at. um, So step one, step one is figure out what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Step two is build a team. Step three, Mm -hmm. just stay in it, stay in your lane, Stay stay in your lane. Don't try and like, say um, the, our, even with our financial planner, with some investing we've done, like don't go in and look at what she invested in and then see if you can find a better way to invest. Like just trust, you've got to trust the people that you're you got to trust the people. You have to trust them. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this, but one of the most frustrating things in business is when somebody hires you 
to because they feel you have expertise in a particular area. Mm -hmm. So they hire you to help them. And then they argue with you about the advice that you give them. Have you ever experienced that? I have. I have. It is like one of the most frustrating things in the world. And so one of the things that we've learned is like, look, we're going to be diligent on the front end in terms of like who we add to our team, mm -hmm. right? You know, we're going to do our homework to make sure that A, they're qualified, B, like, you know, we love the progress that they're making, the results yeah. that they get for people, and that, you know, C, there's somebody that we want to add to our team. But once they're added to our team, then we trust them. Like, yeah. we lean into that. Yeah. We stay in our lane, they stay in their lane. Yeah. You can't, you, can't, you can't have anything without trust, right? It's like a relationship or anything. If you don't have trust in that person to do the job or to have a great relationship, it's not It's not. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So our three steps to less chaos and more progress. Number one, get clear on what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Get clear. And step two, to build your team. And little by little, like it's not to say that all of a sudden – go out tomorrow and try and find everybody like our the first thing we ever found was the financial planner and then the accountant and then the um, property manager came as we grew that side of our business but it was just like building that team slowly but then really like it's kind of like relationship building right like yeah. we they become almost like friends but then almost like trust in them that they know like our accountants and our bank account and I will say I will say this like we've had people that we've added to our team that didn't work out yeah. and that's okay too. Like I, we can think of a, a very particular real estate agent early on in our uh, careers yeah. and lives who uh, we put a lot of trust in and uh, well, that, that didn't work. And so that, you know, person is no longer on our team, but we have, you know, two other real estate agents that we have 100% trust in who yeah. have helped us immensely over the years yeah. with multiple properties. Yeah. So, you know, building a team is just like building a team in a business, right? They have to buy, they have to kind of, or understand your yeah you want to be diligent on the front end yeah. put put trust in them and uh, you know and then you know it goes back to a little uh quote that one of my early mentors said he said uh burn me once shame on you burn me twice shame on me and that's kind of like what we live by like when we hire somebody they're on the team we have full trust in them and then if anything happens then that's when we you know yeah. course correct and then step number three is like once you have got clear on what what you're good at build a team around it Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane and just move forward. <laughs> well, well, no, because I think you will, like, you make more progress, right? Don't make fun of me. Do that again. Do that again. I like it. <laughs> and just move forward. Yeah. And you said that with passion. Well, it's true because I do think you can get so much further ahead. It's even like us working together. Like, we manage a lot as a couple in, like, our businesses. But we wouldn't, if we didn't work together as a couple, if you don't work together with people and work together as a team, you can't get as far. It's true. You stay by you, yourself and you, try to do everything you, You've kind of just... Uh, accepted the fact that I am useless with details. Yeah. You used to fight it in the beginning. You used to try to change me in the beginning. Well, because I couldn't understand why you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I still do wonder. <laughs> That's okay. So now we Sometimes now you still wonder. want to what? Sometimes I still wonder how you don't remember some stuff. I, I forget. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Cheryl says she loves your plaid shirt. Oh, thank you. Can I tell you? Can I tell the Can I tell the funny story about yesterday? Okay. When we about your shirt yesterday? So I got to tell. You. So we were looking at um, uh, a piece of property yesterday, and I just got to say, uh, uh, there's two stories I want to share. One, this little funny I'm one. Let's share your version, and then I'll share my version. Okay. So the first thing is say. that we were we were um, looking at this piece of property, and Amy is wearing not this shirt, but another uh, shirt, and um, and then I noticed like. You know, partway through, I'm like, I, I think Amy's got that shirt on inside out and backwards. And, and, and I'm, I'm like, do I say anything? You know, is that is that appropriate to it's say a something? shirt that was hardly recognizable. You wouldn't have No, no, you totally did because there was a big uh, label on the back out here. And then there was a big label on the wow. back here. But <laughs> but then uh, and we were joking around because, like, we were in a mad scramble to get out of the house. And, because, and because somebody was late. Well. You were late. Own it. You were late. <laughs> I was, I, I, uh, I, I was a little too optimistic on my, on my timelines. Um, but, uh, but the second reason I wanted to share the story about looking at property is because this is another good example, right? Like we, you know, years ago, like over 10 years ago, um, we found a piece of property that was like a, you know, a dream piece of property. 
-hmm. And we had to have a team to help us with that, you know, yeah. uh, to help, you know, bring that together. And long story short, we're just now building on it. So like over 10 years later, yeah. we just now built. Uh, um, and one of the team members that's helping us build that is the, the builder. And mm -hmm. ironically enough, he was the builder that built our very first home. We still have. <laughs> Isn't that amazing how this just came full circle? Like we were talking about how this came up today yeah. with the story of like, we were looking at a house for our first home. Yeah. And then ultimately we had, we ended up buying this house from this gentleman named Henry Boer. And, and then now full circle, he's like, you know, still yeah. helping us and building our most oh, recent home. I just love it because you talked about my shirt being backwards. Well, yeah, um, I have no <laughs> idea why, but. <laughs> huh, anyway, so yeah. So what's your version of the story then? Well, that you were late and you weren't owning that you were late. That's why we were, that's uh, why my shirt was backwards and we were rushing. Uh, Cheryl like Fraser said, is this really live? Cheryl, this is really, uh, Sherry Fraser, sorry. Sherry, yes, this is really live. Yes, yeah. Sherry, of course. Why, why, why would we fake being live? We're totally live. Um, anyways, so. The three steps to less chaos and more progress. Number one, get clear on what you're good at. Yes, clear on what you're good at. Number two, build a team. Build a team and. Number three, stay in your lane. I can do my little move. Wait, what's it? Stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> your power move. Yeah. Um, but it's so true though. You got to stay in your lane. You got to own it. Just yeah, own and, it. and don't apologize for not knowing anything you don't know how to do and. Like someone posted in the comments about changing people. Totally, you can't change people. And why would you want to change people? I married you a long time ago and you love t-shirts and that's what he loves to wear. So I love to see him in a suit and dressed up, but he's never going to do that all the time. So why would I try and change is this, you? Is this your like, she's sneaky like this. She I think mean, this is like a little subtle, subtle no, uh, ploy saying, to get I'm me to saying. wear. It's like you own, you stayed, know what you're good at and stay in your lane and know who you are. It's true. Okay, so you're a t-shirt. I'm a t-shirt Adidas wearing man. Adidas Peloton riding. <laughs> okay, now trail we're running. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, recap three steps to less chaos, more progress. One, get clear on what you're good at. Yeah, Two, build a, build a team around you. And three, stay in your lane. Yeah. All right, my friends. And, ha and happy weekend or happy long weekend. That's all for today. Have yourself a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.